Today is Monday, January 3rd, and this is the ADM Investor Services Weekly Market Kickoff. Please note that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. Today's guests are Steve Freed, ADMIS Vice President of Grain Research, and Alan Bush, ADM Investor Services Senior Financial Economist. Steve, starting with the grain markets this morning, as we kick off the new year, what were the dominant factors that played into 2021 prices, and what do you think they'll be for 2022? I, I think it started out with money flow as more money came into uh, the grain markets. Right now, uh, the managed funds have are long 512,000 uh, grain comment, uh, contracts. The record was 779 in 2012. Uh, the index funds are long 950,000 uh, contracts. Their record was uh, a million contracts in 2010. So we've had money flow coming in, and some people think that uh, we will go and test those numbers that the managed funds were long in 2012. Uh, we also had some USDA reports that came out that were supportive to the marketplace. Then I think demand picked up, especially in ethanol and uh, U.S. domestic soybean crush. And as far as 20. 22, I think it's going to all be about supply and weather. That's what we're trading today, and I think that's what we'll trade at least for the next three months. Steve, what about technicals? Are there some key technicals we should be looking at in the grains? You know, uh, back in uh, 2021, the nearby beans traded between $12 and $14. $13.85 seems to be a really important price. If we trade over, you're going to bring in more buying. Corn traded between $5.20 and $6. And again, that $6 level, we pushed over it, but we haven't been able to sustain it with farmers selling above the marketplace. So I think $6.20 is a real important price level. And as far as the wheat is concerned, it started in July at $6. And Kansas City went all the way up to $8.92. So $9 is probably an important price level for KC wheat. Um, Steve, when's the next key USDA report? Do you think it'll be important? Uh, will we continue to see volatile trade? What do you think the USDA will say? I think the January 12th could be the most important report in 2022. Um, you know, everyone is looking for the USDA to raise the bean carryout and also the wheat carryout. Uh, corn uh, could be unchanged if they raise their corn crop. Uh, but also raise demand. So I think it gives a strong foundation for the speculative community. Our stocks are down. We need perfect weather. We need uh, bigger crops in 2022 to keep prices from trading maybe a lot higher. Alan, first day, first trading day of the new year. Let's talk about the stock market. What are the seasonal yes. rules for stock index futures? in the first trading week of the new year? Well, the one seasonal that has come into play in the last 13 years is that in 11 of those last 13 years, stock index futures have advanced in the first trading week of January uh, on average of 1.6%. And so far we're on track for that this week, of course, it's very, very much early in the week. So I think that will continue and I would expect higher prices with what we're seeing today in the indices, and I would also go with higher prices for the week as well. Now, looking at the currency markets, do you see some trading opportunities going into the new year? Well, a lot of traders, they focus on the dollar index and the euro currency, but I don't think that's where the opportunities lie. Interest rate differential expectations are neutral for those two, and they have been trading in a broad sideways uh, range uh, over the last month or more, but I think the opportunities now are in the pound to the long side as the Bank of England has become aggressive in hiking rates uh, last a month. Uh, there are at least three or four rate hikes coming this year from the Bank of England. That would argue for higher prices for the pound. Uh, by the same token, the Bank of Japan has been rather accommodative in showing no inclination uh, to raise rates. So I think the yen is a sale. Also, there's a double bottom in the Japanese yen, just a little bit lower. So I think the yen can continue to uh, tr trade under pressure. So 
uh, I'll be trading the pound from the long side and the Japanese yen from the short side. Alan, what are the charts saying about the interest rate futures at the short end of the curve, namely the euro dollar futures? Okay, the euro dollar futures uh, have broken out to the upside. Last Thursday, there was a, a, a big move higher above some uh, downtrend lines. In fact, one of the trend, trend lines uh, started uh, in uh, November. So a breakout to the upside with no corresponding change in fundamentals, as far as uh, most analysts can tell. But I'm thinking that maybe the fundamentals may catch up with the chart breakout to the upside. So I think the focus should be on the long side of euro dollar futures. And we'll see what, what the fundamentals bring later. But I think this breakout is a valid breakout. And I would trade the euro dollar futures from the long side. I think uh, this is the beginning of a, a fairly long move to the upside for futures at the short end of the curve. Thank you both. Remember the views and opinions expressed today on this video are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. If you'd like more information about our brokerage services, would like to speak to one of our experts about managing your risks, or would like to open a trading account, please visit www.admis.com.